the Bartender Rant Podcast. My name is Steve Haley, and I'm here with my co-host, Mike Windsor. We're recording from the Pool Room Studios at the Bonnie View Mansion. And Mike, I have to tell everybody out there, it is his birthday. We got a birthday boy today. It was my birthday yesterday, but close uh, enough. Well, and, and we're not going to tell the people the age, but um, happy to have you back, man. How was your trip out to Kansas? Pretty good? It was great, yeah. We uh, helped control the... Uh, Pheasant population, so very important. You're work. doing God's work, exactly. Work. How how far is that drive from Kansas to Maryland? Well, from where I live, it's about um, 17 and a half hours. But once you stop, you know, and uh, you know, get snacks, take piss, and everything, it's about 18 hours or so. Now, did you tell me that you like refuse to sleep at hotels? You sleep at the side of the road and yeah. gas stations. And I'm not going to spend money to sleep for two hours. This man's a savage. He's a savage. You're going to get axe murdered one day. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Mike. We have a very special guest, my little brother, Tom Haley, is going to join us today. He's going to tell us about some of his service industry experience, and he's going to be making one of the best signature cocktails of all time for us, the Tom Collins. Simple, but it's just like the martinis last week. It's a classic you can't go wrong with every single time. So Tom's going to be joining us. Really excited about that. But before we get into it, Mike, any updates, anything we need to hear about from the week that's going nuts for you? Um, you know, I'm, I'm shitting bricks today. I'm hungover as hell. I've been squirting out my butt on the toilet all afternoon. Um, but I'm feeling pretty good now. We're about to get some Tom Collins in us. How about you? Uh, I picked up kind of an odd job. I, uh, was, uh, moving a, uh, hoarder's place out for oh, a buddy of mine. He just sold the property. So I was moving it out and it, it was kind of a nightmare. Like the place was a biohazard in itself. And I uh, loaded a 26-foot truck up to the brim and just got that all done today. So I'm a little tired, but I'm excited to be here. So Was there one particular hoarder's item that just really skeeved you? Like, did this person, like, she, collect, you know, wallpaper or something? She like had that? a fucking, I don't even know what it is, a scorpion, like, 9 millimeter fucking little, like, rifle thing. I don't even know what it was. And, like, I found out about this afterwards because I drove the truck. So I'm driving around with somebody else's gun in the back. That's always good. And it was just, I don't know, it's a scorpion stuff that I can find out for you, but it was just a crazy looking little SMG I'll kind of thing. I'll tell you what, you Kansas boys, you're pretty, but you're not quick to the uptake. Driving around with somebody's unregistered <laughs> I, I firearm in the Somebody car. else loaded it. It wasn't me. <laughs> well, shit, I'm glad that worked out for you. Um, anyway, let's get right into it. Here's Tom and the Tom Collins. <laughs> All right, we got Tom uh, Tom Haley joining us today. He's going to make the Tom Collins for us. How you doing, Tom? I'm good. How are you guys? We are doing great. Good, good to have uh, you here. Excited great. about this drink. I'm always up for a gin drink. So tell us a little bit about why you decided to make a Tom Collins today. Well, uh, when I first started drinking, I really didn't know shit about drinks. <laughs> so I, uh, I remember going to the bar, and the bartenders would always be like, what do you want? And I had no idea what the fuck I was doing, so I... I found out what a Tom Collins was, and I just started ordering that when I was at the bars, and really, really started to like it. So, uh, now, I, I always ask people when the Tom Collins conversation comes up, were you a gin drinker before Tom Collins, or did Tom Collins make you a gin drinker? Uh, honestly, it's probably the only gin drink that I... Really? Drink. Yeah. Okay. Well, you would have missed that. I mean, you, you're probably happy you missed that last week with some dirty... Uh, uh, blue cheese olive martinis last week, and we had the same Bombay Sapphire. So, uh, why don't you start getting that assembled for Mike and I and yourself? And sure. uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to kind of walk people through the recipe. So, for those of you out there that are not familiar with the Tom Collins, again, kind of like a martini, it's one of the most classic gin drinks. Uh, you can hear, you know, you can prepare the ice in the shaker, but you can also stir it. And the Tom Collins, again, it's going to be a classic, uh, very simple three part drink. All right, so you got your body, two ounces of gin. Uh, you have about an ounce of lemon juice. You can kind of vary on that, depend on how, how much of a bite you want. Uh, do about a half ounce of simple syrup. You're going to shake that all up, uh, put it in a rocks glass or what we would call a, um, you know, a ball glass, a highball glass, uh, and then top that off with a little bit of soda water. So Tom's going to get that prepared for us. And Mike, what's our motto? For our, our cocktail every week, don't just... Don't just listen along, drink along. That's right. So for all of you out there preparing this cocktail, get ready for some some refreshing citrus vibes. I'm ready. I need I need a drink. I'm telling you, man, I'm hurting. <laughs> I mean, the, the squirting out my butt was not kidding. something I said... <laughs> Twice. Not, uh, some, twice not something I, I said for uh, for uh, theater effect. I mean, I'm, I'm in pain today. <laughs> I'm in pain. 
That's what you get for drinking white wine, red wine, and whiskey the night before. So. Yeah, did you just mix it all together in a bucket? I did. I did. I actually funneled it. I was beer bombing uh, wine, and when we ran out of wine, I went to Jameson. You know, you say that as a joke, but when you and I met, you were literally beer bombing Jameson. You know what's funny? Yeah. I, I had not thought about that story I'm for years. you remember it. Jake, Jake Halsey's house, okay? Uh, you and Tom were eating mushrooms off the table. Whoa, whoa. I and I walk... Oh, just like shiitake, yeah. Yeah, I shiitake remember, you know, mushrooms off know, the pizza. table. It was delicious, yeah. And I walk in, and I immediately beer bong some Jameson. I proceed to throw up all over myself. <laughs> Jay calls, he steals my hoodie. I still have some still have some gripes about that. So. <laughs> yeah, and then you fell asleep sitting up on the steps. That's right. Which, by the way, if we ever get a following, and thank you all for listening along if you are. Uh, we got <laughs> Drinking a, along. We, yeah, too. drink along. We've got a sell the t-shirts of you passed out on the toilet. I don't know what there you're these, talking about. There are these epic photos about. of him passed out on the toilet. We don't We don't need to discuss that. This is <laughs> this is the Tom Collins episode. So, so Tom's got the gin and simple syrup and a little bit of fresh squeezed lemon juice in a shaker right now. Now, Tom, how do you feel about fresh squeezed lemon juice versus like a stock? Ah, uh, it's going to make a lot of difference. No doubt. No doubt. I feel like you all, whenever possible in bartending, you really have to... Um, Go after those fresh ingredients. So, yeah, if I saw a bartender bring out one of those little plastic lemons and squirt it in there, <laughs> give me a fucking break. <laughs> All right. All right. I am pumped right now. Now, Tom, I noticed that you're drinking yours out of a coffee mug. Is there any uh, particular reason behind that? Uh, you know, it got some Santas on there. Oh, I'll try to be fast. Little, little ho- it cold, holiday longer. themed. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. That's all. All right. And again, folks, so and once you get that you... shake and mix into the glass, whether it's the highball or the tumbler, you're going to want to top it off with soda water. I'm sorry, Mike. No, no, you're good. I was like, did you say, did you talk about the soda water? It's always important. Uh, you, you know, it's funny. Bartenders uh, are kind of like uh, helicopter parents. They see another bartender <laughs> not quite making the drink the right way, and they're ready to jump down their throat. <laughs> Uh, Mike, I could I could see Mike teed up to just get just get after me on that one. So I'm just excited for the drink. These are some good looking cocktails. I can't wait to dive in. Yeah, I mean it's been a while since I've made them, so we'll <laughs> we'll see how they are. I they, they, uh, just fine. they might be so well, Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Oh mm, my my. Delicious. Well done, sir. I have to say that is a perfect Tom Collins. Thank you. Appreciate the, it. You, you hate it when it comes out, and, and again, we talked about the color on that uh, on that martini last week, where you're looking for kind of that um, that smoky, almost lemon lime Gatorade color, not quite that yellow, but you know what your urine looks like after a hard weekend of drinking. Same thing here. Um, when we're talking about color, we want something really light, just a, a, a you know that soda water with a little bit of citrus cloud in there, but not not a whole lot. You don't want to be serving lemon juice. To no, absolutely not. Yeah, and just is... a quick interjection: if anybody ever serves you a martini that looks like piss, don't drink it. All right. Like, that's, that's a... <laughs> After some of the stories that you told last week, I can understand why. You don't need any other health code violations. All right, so let's jump right into it. So Tom, we always talk about uh, you know service industry uh, experience as kind of being you know the the first step of how you got into this business. And look, there are people out there trying to look sexy on LinkedIn. This is your drink, all right? I want to hear a little bit about how'd you get into the service industry, what's the extent of your service industry experience, and, and maybe what current bar or restaurant you work at. So tell sure. us a little bit how sure. you got into it. Um, so I actually first got into the service industry uh, before bartending, but restaurant work. Um, I was 18 years old, and I was working in a deli at ShopRite. And, uh, <laughs> I had some friends working in the restaurant industry, and all they talked about is how much fun they were just having. Every every night after work, they were going over to each other's houses. Everybody's getting together, having a good time. Uh, my buddies convinced me to go over there and ask for a job. I asked for a job. I got a job. And I mean, I'm not going to say where that was because there was. A, I want to talk about some things that happened there. <laughs> well, tell tell us about the the shop. What kind of restaurant? Sure, was it? sure. It was um, it was like a crab house okay. type deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, going to be another crab house that I bring up again, but uh, separate crab house. And I mean, if you've ever seen the movie Waiting, this probably was the epitome of that. Okay. Of that so night. it was a shit show. Total oh, shit show. oh, total, absolute shit show. Okay. Uh, it was, but probably one of the 
most fun places I've worked at. So there have been a couple crab houses though, right along yes, the way. Yes, yes. Let's let's label them. So that first one we'll call Crab House One. Crab House One. All right. Yes. And the second one I think we can probably we can say, we can probably say the name of Ocean Pride yeah, for Ocean all of you Pride Baltimore for listeners. One. You're familiar with Ocean Pride. What are some of the other places? Uh, so so you got into it first as a cook or a bartender. What were you doing? So I was uh, just running food at okay. the time. Um, after that, I ended up going to school, went to West Virginia for a little bit. Uh, I did a little bit of bouncing there at Joe Mama's for just a little bit. I ended up, I was having to walk home every single night across campus. So I kind of was like, not really about that. Yeah. <laughs> You're freezing. a bouncer. You're a bouncer. You can take it. Yeah, yeah, tough guy, <laughs> tough guy, right? He's a tough guy at the door. He's <laughs> but, a, uh, he's a you know, on the wall. When you're walking through the mountains and it's the winter time, <laughs> oh, gotcha. it's a little it's cold. the elements you're worried about. Yes, yeah. yes. No, not the people. But, um, but yeah, after I came back from that, I started doing some construction, and that just was – I really enjoyed it, but, I mean, it was just consuming – yeah. my life. So the service industry, you know, is is something that kept bringing you back, yeah. right? So, so so you start as a as a food runner and you, and you do a little bit of bouncing. How do you get front of the house? Kind of take me through that idea of like how would you get to the point where you're bartending and you're serving? So after well I I got a little fed up with the construction cuz I just wasn't making the money. I felt like I was selling my soul. Yeah. Um, you know, I actually talked to you. You were currently working at Ocean Pride and you said that you might be able to get me Right. Any any sort of job, whether it's back of the house or whatever. So and, and for the people, Ocean Pride is a seventy year old seafood stop establishment that sounds like a gay pride parade that happens at a beach. <laughs> um, I've always felt like it was an odd name, but hey, they get they do great business. They do steam crabs year round. Trivia. Um, it's not, very not right now. very cheap to <laughs> yeah, drink there, but. So, so you start bartending with us at, at Ocean Pride. We were having a blast there. And then well, since, since then, what other types of positions you held in the service industry? Because we'll get into specific stuff. In <laughs> um, I've, I've pretty much done it all with the exception of managing. I've kind uh-huh. of been a float-around utility guy at a lot of different places where I've worked. So what are we talking? We're talking... I'm talking I can do the dishes. I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can bus. I can bar back. I can serve. I can bartend. You know, whatever uh-huh. needed to be done at the time. Jack you know? of all trades. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how I kept myself most of my there jobs, honestly. Do you have... Um, has there ever been one particular position that you've really liked in the service industry more than others? Hmm. Um, so <laughs> there's two sides to that. I really enjoyed expediting because you get to interact with both sides of the restaurant. You get the back of the house and the front of the house, and you don't necessarily have to do the sweat and grime of the, of the line work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that was, I, I really enjoyed, but then, you know, bartending really was what probably I, I enjoyed the most because it's just... The money, it's the and, almighty dollar, yeah, exactly. you know. Also, the interaction, the way you get to like. I mean, I know you guys have probably served too, so you know the interaction that you have at tables is much different than the interaction you're having with your bar guests. Oh yeah. So, okay. Mike and I were talking last week. You know, we we uh, you know we interviewed uh, Mike and kind of went through his story. And my attraction had always been to get to the front of the house because that's where the money was, mm-hmm. right? And that's where the exposure was. You know, um, you could. Get a girl's number. You could get people to tip you. You kind of had their attention. You were like the Pied Piper out there. And Mike, I mean, you kind of agree in that regard. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, we've all had a little bit of mix of both, so that's cool. So, are you still working in the industry? Um, right now, I actually just recently got laid off from my job. That's um, unfortunate. Yeah, it is what it is. But I'm I'm taking this time. I got enough money saved up. I think I'm going to take this time and do a. Do a little bit of travel around the states with my dog. So, cool. Nice. Cool. I um, think that's my next step right now, and to then maybe back into service again. I'm not really sure yet, though. Awesome. You go through Kansas, you can stay in my Airbnb. <laughs> Free of charge, man. Sweet. I, Sweet. I've stayed there. I know that a Kansas Airbnb <laughs> on the side of a corner country highway doesn't quite sound it's like l- the Ritz, but I, let me tell you, folks. <laughs> let me tell you. Justin and Mike have uh, put together quite the operation out there. It's it's a beautiful setup. So, it's, like, it's literally a, it's a camper in a field. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, without further ado, we're going to get into the inquiries, the top ten questions um, for you. For any of you repeat listeners that are coming back, listening to this again, heard one of our shows, you know this is the core of what we do, right? We, it's not every question you could ever ask, but it's the questions that you really need to ask bartenders and servers to really get an insight of the industry. The golden standard. The golden <laughs> standard, right? You know what? Like, let's let's not be shy about it. Let's be cocky. 
these listeners don't know fuck about fuck. Okay, <laughs> right, we've developed the best ten questions known to man. This is. I heard they were thinking about replacing the SAT with these questions. <laughs> and only servers and bartenders are going to go to Harvard and Yale from now on. So. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump right in. Question number one, Tom. Tell us about some of your bartender server pet peeves or misconceptions. Things about the industry that people just don't understand or that customers don't know piss off bartenders. Hmm. Um I think a lot of people, like a lot of a lot of guests, especially with serving, not necessarily bartending, you don't get it as, as often, I feel like, but serving, a lot of times guests do don't realize uh there's other people in the restaurant. So, uh, you, you know, you want to you take care of all these other people, and they're all trying to wait, flag you down. They're getting frustrated. They're getting antsy. Right. And you're like, listen, I'm, I'm trying to take care of these people as well as I'm trying to take care of you. So They need their ranch. Yeah. They need it, and they, they need it right now. They right? do. <laughs> they do. They're not going to be able to eat, uh, eat that without it. So, <laughs> eat their fries without their ranch or mayo. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, is, is that really, you know, we kind of uh, last week hammered down this idea of mutual respect, right? We were talking about splitting checks is one of Mike's big pet peeves. And it sounds like really at, at the end of the day, what you're saying is this idea that um, the customer comes in understanding that they are not the only person that you're helping, right? Yeah. Is that kind of mutual respect that you have a bigger job than just them and their table? Exactly. Right. They need to understand, yeah, I think I think you coming out to eat, you need to acknowledge that. I mean, that comes along with the same thing as understanding tipping properly. You know, no I think that... Just personally, I don't think you should come out to eat if you're not prepared to act properly, mm -hmm. like in a public setting. Yeah, so, fair enough. What do you think the biggest tipping faux pas is for you? Um, there's a lot of them. You know, I, for for me, just to give you a, a quick example, mine has always been the split with cash and card, where part of that cash tip is supposed, to, or part of that cash uh, portion is supposed to go to tip, but the person at the table says take the cash first. I clear out the cash, I put it on the card, and then the person on the card only tips to mm. their percentage. No, to, or, to whatever's or what still on the card. On the card. Correct. Oh, correct. That's a dirty trick. And it, well, I don't like that. a lot of times it's a, you know, I, I really don't blame every customer. I do think that there's some ignorance out there because mm. you got to think it through. You know, if you have a set of customers at a table and it's two couples and one couple wants to pay cash, sometimes they'll throw their cash on the table and then they just stop paying attention to the transaction, mm. right? And the person with the card takes that cash delivers it to the server, and then there's a miscommunication about how much of that cash was supposed to be potentially part of the tip. So sure. that's a big one for me. Do you have any with, with the tipping process in particular? Um, well, honestly, so something I noticed recently, like with uh, with COVID and everything going on, um, and a lot of businesses moving over to the toast system instead of the micro system. Yeah, it's uh, been a, a takeover. I don't know. What, if a different, know. different computer program? Yeah, yeah so you remember how POS ran the show mm -hmm. for 15 years? Yeah, it was There's a new program called Toast that's gotten popular in the last two or three years. I, what would you say? 80% of the restaurants in this area have Everywhere it. Everywhere you see seems to have it it's now. It's impossible so. not, to, not to have it. It's so like the, in what, it's just not as good? No, it's very advanced as mm. far as analytics, but... Um, but what I'm getting at is, so when you go to do your payments at the end, a lot of, a lot of places are using handhelds now and stuff, mm. and you have these boxes that have 15%, 20%, oh, yeah, 25%. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. When you have that, it's a lot harder to not understand what you're tipping. Mm. Okay. You know what I mean? So I've, I've noticed that I think people were actually tipping better mm. really? once this started they, they to get, happen. Given the prompt. Yeah. yeah, because it's like you're... Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like you're asking, like, hey, do you want to be, exactly, wanna be yeah. cool or not? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the true testament of uh, people being sheeple, mm -hmm. right? You know, uh, when they don't have that prompt, they don't, they, they can't do the math in their head, right? But then the second that you give them even a little bit of direction, they seem to be able to figure it out. Well, I so. think it's also, it's the human interaction. It's the fact that you can write down a tip and leave it on a table, mm -hmm. but when you have to stand there and go, oh, like, yeah. you're like, I don't, so awkward, I'm not looking, yeah. but it's like, you know... Well, I like I, I kind of like that that it makes it non-invasive. It doesn't actually put the pressure on the server, right? Yeah. You put it in front of them, and they they are looking at it 
as a screen, and it's a different sort of relationship than you standing over them as they fill out their check. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's interesting. But I feel like it also might uh, discourage people like tipping really well. You know what I mean? It's it kind could, of it's kind of like a cop out. It certainly could. It's like oh, I was going to leave a really good tip. Ah, eh, fuck it, twenty five percent. But you know what they say: high tide raises all boats, right? And so for for every outlier, for every Bozell that's going to give me a hundred bucks on a fifty dollar tab, right? Yeah. You know, there's going to be 20 people that stiff me. And if I could turn around those 20 stiffs, you know, Bozell's not going to come in every night. You know, that sure. kind of thing. What the fuck, and, what the fuck and, is a Bozell? It's, it's a regular. He's a regular. So, okay. so we'll, we'll probably be getting, getting into that. But Bozell's one of the best regulars that ever yeah, uh, nice uh, helped, us, helped Tom and I out at Ocean Pride. And, and a good guy and uh, good family. And just always, uh, if you want a blueprint for a customer that treats servers right, that is that is Bozell. Mm. So... All right. Well, let's let's segue from this tipping question right into your best and worst tips. You got any good, you know, big tip stories, bad tip stories that that you like to share? <sighs> All right. Uh, <laughs> oh, I feel one. <laughs> I feel one. I uh, I remember. So I have, I have two bad tip stories. Yes. I had uh, I had one where I was taking care of a table and their friends were there and their friends decided to pick up their tab and since they decided to pick up their tab. They didn't tip, and the other table tipped only on their tab, which mm. was so. These people picked up a ninety dollar tab, and they only had like a twenty five dollar tab, and then tipped on a twenty five dollar tab, Ooh. but paid the Woof. other people's ninety dollar tab. So that was one of my bad tip experiences, but that's not my worst one. My worst one was was when I was working at Ocean Pride, and I uh, I served this lady. She ordered a full dozen. Before you get into it, describe her for me. <laughs> he wants a picture. Of I'm lady. very listen. I, I like to know what these assholes look like. <laughs> we, we were trying to work out their names last week too. So, so give me an idea. What is an African American lady? She just kind of. You just already knew she just wasn't really having it when she came. Okay, in. she didn't like you. She was just in a bad mood. She just yeah. Just okay. Every every hated the world. Okay, you know? I got you. Didn't wasn't personally against me. And that just, happens. And. Uh, but so, you know, I'm taking care of her. She orders a, a dozen crabs. Um, she ends up sitting there waiting for people after she's ordered these crabs. Didn't say she was waiting for anybody or anything. So she sits there. Finally, her, uh, her friends or family get there, and she's like, these crabs are all cold. <laughs> oh, <shit>. And <laughs> I was like, well, you, you ordered them an hour ago. Yeah. Um, and she's like, well, I want to speak to a manager. So I have Dom come it's out. Like Dom knows the lady. Um, he actually, he's like, he's like, I'm going to take care of her. Mm. He recooks her a fresh batch of crabs. They keep the crabs too. So now they have two dozen crabs crabs at the table. All right. They get to the end of their meal and, uh, they don't tip me at all. A dollar. So we're like a 200, 200 plus dollar tab, you know, don't tip me a single dollar. And I, you know, I'm like, it was there a problem. What they tell me was, no, there wasn't a problem with you. Last time we we were here, our waitress was nasty. What the hell? I said, so you didn't have a problem with my service? And she says, no, because the waitress last time was nasty. Uh, and uh, you don't get tips. Yeah, exactly. I, bet, I, I don't. I don't get tips. I bet everywhere she eats, the waitress before was nasty. <laughs> Every single place she goes. You know, some people I just think wake up. I'm I'm a big proponent of attitude. Right, like you wake up, you're in a bad mood. You go out in the world in a bad mood. You're gonna put that out there. It's it's you're just gonna run into situations mm-hmm. like this. And I'm fortunate for a bartender, a server. Um, and can I be honest? This is something that, as far as uh, pet peeves and misconceptions, that I want every listener to take to heart. When you sit down at a table, if your bartender, or your server, doesn't seem like they're having a good day, there is a very high ch- likelihood. That they just waited on a lady like this, right? Mm. And you got to keep in mind, they are putting up with attitudes from people all day long. So yeah, Not just customers, too, but you know, right. managers and everything else. Right. Well, and, and also, it sucks, too, from the, the uh, server's point of view, because you have to take care of every... Even if they're being yeah. kind of shitty, yeah. number one, it's your job. Exactly. So you've got to take good care of them. But then I've also had people that were really unpleasant to serve. But then they left me great tips. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's the so, shockers. Exactly. Yeah. So like, like oh. you you know, it's you know, you gotta love those. First and foremost, your, it's your job, but you never know what you know what's actually gonna happen at the end there. You feel bad later about it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, man. Like, I thought nice. these people were assholes. It's just gonna be nice. 
So that was great. Those are great couple stories. So uh, that kind of leads us into our next um, worst drink orders. A any particular orders that people have, you know, wanted you to make that are just, you know, just kind of ridiculous. How raunchy. <laughs> <laughs> right? When you get that order and you're like, wait, you want vodka and Coca-Cola? <laughs> what? Um, hmm. Off the top of my head, I don't really have much. I do. I have had a couple people come in and order, uh, and it actually sounded like a really good drink. This guy ordered gin, uh, ginger beer, and ginger liqueur, mm. and uh, he, he ordered it on a rocks in a wine glass with a lemon twist. Mm. We made that drink three times for this man, and he sent it back every single <laughs> time. And eventually, I was like, "Sir, would you just like to maybe order something off of the menu?" He says, "Sure." He orders. Oh, we have a we had a white Cosmo at, on our menu at the okay. time, which was just a Cosmo made with white cranberry. Just okay. the only difference. Right. Um, he decides to get it with gin instead. <laughs> okay, I bring it out to him. Sends that oh back my also. God. <laughs> so. I, it, it was just it was just the whole thing. So I really just don't like people ordering their own custom drinks at just, all. You no just bring what. the bottles out and you're like, you yeah, fucking you, make it, man. You fucking make it. Shit. <laughs> exactly. I, all right, well, uh, I mean, let's go right into question number four. Ultimate mistakes, fuck-ups. All right, so we're talking, it, it can be you, it can be a co-worker, but tell us about some of like the big restaurant mistakes. You drop the tray, you know. <sighs> My... My probably first or second day when I was serving at Ocean Pride, I uh, was carrying a tray of drinks, and I'd never really, I only carried trays of food. I'd never really carried drink trays yeah, before. drinks are tricky, man. They really are, especially if you have different ones. Yeah. The heavy, oh, yeah, you got to position beer. those exactly. properly. Exactly. Heavy beer yeah. and light that's, wine. That's what yeah. it was. So that's I brutal. took one drink off of this tray, and I had... All of these drinks fall on probably a five-year-old child. Oh my god! That was sitting there, and <laughs> they're, he, not even, they're, they're not old enough to drink, man. What are you doing? <laughs> you soaked, didn't him? soaked this kid, soaked his seat. He's crying. The parents are like, "It's okay, it's okay." I'm, I'm like mortified. This is like my second day on the job. I'm just like, I am so sorry. I uh, and this kid is just will not stop crying. The parents feel bad for me. Can I? And this is what I was just gonna say. We talked about last. Last week, Mike, some Mike and I stories of dropping trays, and Mike, what happens? Well, you get, you get the a good, yeah, you get a good tip. Yeah. You get a better, you tip. get better tips. Better tips. So, yeah. I, so I have a theory. I have a theory, right? If you can never find a manager that's a big pushover, you should drop Just people's drop food and drinks every single time and see if your tip skyrockets. And if there's a kid sitting at the table, you know, will. target them. I would love to see a bartender or server do a real social experiment and actually try something oh like God. that because I think it'd be crazy. I just hope that little kid had been being a shit all day long <laughs> and the parents, the parents are like, like fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, you, you got it. Yeah. See, secretly, Pete's sitting there at the table. He's got three kids. He works, you know, 90 hour weeks at his accounting firm. He's just at the end of his rope. Right? <laughs> every every time he pulls into the driveway, he sits there for an hour and a half, smoking cigarettes, wondering if he should go inside. And then little Timmy gets the, the fucking drink spilled on top of his head, and Pete's like, "Fuck it, yeah. fuck it, yeah, there is a god." <laughs> it's like this is what I needed this week. Uh, all right, well, look, I, this is not quite fuck ups, but it's it's kind of in the same vein. Question five: Health code violations. Right. This is where tell you us about careful, health code yeah. violations you've seen. Protect the names of the innocent. You know? Sure, sure. And the guilty. And so, <laughs> I, uh, I worked at a couple places. One of the places that I worked at, which actually we'll just say it was Crab House 1 because I didn't disclose Okay, Crab House 1, good. Um, there was a woman who was, <laughs> there was a woman who was fired for flicking the bean in the bathroom. Nice. On job. How'd she get caught? I, a customer or something. I don't oh, know. She didn't lock the door? I don't know the... The full details. Can, on can it. we walk, can we talk this out really quick? One of two things had to happen, right? And tell me if I'm wrong. You know the restaurant better. Was the restaurant one of those single person lockable bathrooms? No. Okay. All right. Because if it's a single person lockable, then obviously what happened is she forgot to lock the door. Yeah. Right. The door's ajar. Somebody comes in. She's you know spanking the dolphin. <laughs> she's choking the chicken. Right. <laughs> And, and and obviously you can't have that in your place yeah, of business. No, well, I mean, generally not. I, you know, I don't I don't see a problem. What with if that. she's a squirter? Well, okay, you're in the bathroom. People are wiping their ass and stuff. So, Mike, let me see if I get this straight. As long as somebody washes their hands, they can pretty much like commit a murder 
They can touch their genitals. They can orgasm and squirt all over a bathroom, and it's not a health code violation. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm not a fucking health inspector, first of all, so <laughs> don't ask me. But Thanks, I'm just saying, thank God. Cheers to that. <laughs> cheers to that. Absolutely. <laughs> Who the shit, you know, cares if this chick was diddling her skittle in the bathroom? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just kind of amazed, like that she got caught. You know what I mean? So let me ask you this. Let's say. Let's say you have a cook, mm -hmm. all right, and you got a cook that goes to his car every now and then and just kind of, you know, chokes the chicken, mm -hmm. for lack of a better uh, yeah. term. Um, are you cool with that cook just as long as he washes his hands? As going long as back I don't have to see it and he's sanitary. You're you know? cool with it. Yeah, I don't give a okay. shit. Okay, okay. It's not like he wasn't doing fair it enough. 10 uh, minutes before he got onto his ship, right. you know what I mean? That's fair enough. Gotta live in the That's world of reality. I gotta be honest with you. We've talked about, a couple times leading into this podcast, some of the classic tropes that we're gonna keep coming back to. Mm -hmm. How, you know, women with, you know, beautiful women with great bodies make... Uh, a lot more money as bartenders than men. Some of these things that we're going to see as themes throughout the show. And I think that this is actually one of them that we really need to talk about, right? <laughs> um, what is the window of masturbation in relation to your shift, right? You know, how close to your shift time or during your break can you or can you not well, masturbate? Well, you already know, like, if, they're, uh, if they jerk yeah. off, like, like I said, what, what catches me off guard is how did you... Did somebody enter the bathroom and then she's still just like moaning and going at it? Like that's a little weird. I'll, I'll Probably. Get, I'll get, yeah, I don't weird. know. I don't know the detail. I mean, you don't really get. They yeah, don't you give don't. me the dirty details. <laughs> they just when tell something you. like that happens. That you hear it through the grapevine. Somebody <laughs> was flicking the bean in the bathroom, got fired. That you know, you know? <laughs> that's so true about restaurant information and and you know uh, uh, health code violations or a customer being uh, you know a uh, bartender being fired. That's how you hear about it, right? Just one sentence. Yeah. What what happened to Nancy? Ah, she is flicking her bean in the bathroom again, and a customer walked in on her. You know <laughs> that kind of thing. What the yeah. fuck are you bartending at, motherfucker? I don't Me know. Sorry. <laughs> hey, you want a piece of pie? Get oh, it. What, what, the, the big top. The big top, Minnesota. Eh? Here, here's all I'm saying. I, w I would be more comfortable like somebody serving me food after like, especially if it was a girl for me. Like if she just got done masturbating, it's compared to thinking about a guy wiping his ass Fair and then serving me his food. Fair enough. I, I hear care. you on sure. that. Fecal sure. matter you know. definitely turns me off more. But, but I, will, I will say this equally. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. It, I I'm a little shocked. Uh, whether or not you could confidently order cream of crab soup <laughs> ever in think, your life. I think I might enjoy it more if like, I knew that, <laughs> if that was the specific you know, waitress. I'd get the cream Thanks, of crab. Thanks, Nancy. Just, this just is some wink, wink, Take that wink, cream wink. of crab. <laughs> exactly. Um, I do have one more that's not, it's not health, as exciting as, health code violation. as masturbation. Yes, health okay. code violation. I think this one actually fits it more. Um <laughs> There was a there was a place I was working at where we had a bus boy going down into the basement, and the basement was a shit show. Tragic. We're talking. There's cardboard boxes on the floor because the water damage is so <laughs> bad down there that it's like the floor is just deteriorating and falling apart. <laughs> the water, the cardboard box is there to, to to soak up some of the water, but it just becomes mush. Would this be the same restaurant that had holes in the line cook floor? Heading down into that very same basement that would be the one. <laughs> I think I know what restaurant you're referring but, to. But so, <laughs> so we had a, a bus boy going down there one day, and a step breaks while he's walking down these stairs, and he falls down into this sludge, <laughs> into this cardboard <laughs> shit sludge. Literally smells like shit, like so raw sewage. I'm pretty sure when they had sewage issues, it was. Just in seeping there. into the basement. In there. Um, so, and we're worried about people masturbating. Exactly. That's you what know, I'm saying. Well, what happens is this kid is probably 14, 15 years old, so he doesn't know any better. They go, hey, we're going to get you a new uniform. Don't even worry about it. They just give him a new uniform, and they had him work the rest move of his fucking move shit. Move on with the day. Now, now, little did they know that I'm sure that he was, like, exposed to high levels of radiation. He has, like, hepatitis C. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I just, no say, doubt. just send him to the bathroom, let him jerk off, you know, sort it out, and then just wash his hands and get back to work. Yeah, there it fine. is. There it is. And, 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 the, and the ball keeps rolling. Um, well, that's a great segue to the other side of the house. Tell us about some ratchet or crazy customers. So, I told Mike the story last week of Brooke. Uh, or maybe we didn't get into. I don't know. I don't think, I think we we're did. saving that for. Yeah, we're for, saving that one. We're saving that one for probably the Dirty Tom episode. 
It involves a lot of urine, uh, severe head injury, and the police. But we'll get to that. <laughs> so tell us about some ratchet or crazy customers you've encountered. Sure. Um, <laughs> there's been a couple different ones. I think a really good one I have is I actually wasn't working. I had just gotten off shift, and I was drinking at the bar at the time. But there was a, a bigger dude in there, and he just was causing problems with everybody, yeah. kind of. And we all were just like, you know, putting up. We was he was really drunk, so we're putting up with like, all right, man, yeah, sure, sure. Finally, this guy's like getting to a point where he wants to like fight everybody, <laughs> and like, you know, the way, it was at Ocean Pride, and the way Ocean Pride works is if you're gonna fight somebody that works there, you're gonna get fought from everybody yeah. that works. You're there. gonna fight twenty months. Yeah. So there. you know, um, Brady's gonna come out of the kitchen. Exactly, with that and nut. Brady's a pacifist, so it's like <laughs> that's crazy. Um, <laughs> But, but basically, this guy ends up, before he can do anything, he goes to the bathroom, passes out on the bathroom floor, and shits himself. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well, listener, you weren't, justice. you weren't ready for a very shit-heavy episode, were you? We're just, just shit-filled. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we are actually going to officially change the name of this podcast to the Bodily Fluids Podcast. <laughs> oh my god, it has been graphic, hasn't it? It, it has been. But you know, that's what happens sometimes. The, the truth of the matter is, we are trying to wake up America on what it's really like to work in the service industry. And I'm going to be honest with you, I cannot think of my service industry experience without some bodily fluids. No, of course not. I mean, yeah. that's just the truth, right? Whether yeah. it's blood from a fight, whether it's Nancy flicking her beam <laughs> being in the bathroom... You know, whether it's some other health and hygiene stories that I've heard with, you know, uh, <laughs> other bodily fluids like spit and urine. We'll get into those. We'll get there. Just make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> you know our motto, wash your hands, people. <laughs> Always wash your hands. So number seven, let's let's move right on. Give us your fights, arrests, and fire story. When was the building on fire? When was there a big fight? I know you just told us this guy's trying to fuck with people, but you got any good like fight or arrest stories from, from your bar service? Mm. Um, honestly, no, not, not too much. Uh, I mean, I've seen, you know, a couple fights, but they really don't, nothing that stood out any yeah. more than an average bar yeah. fight or anything. We so. had, we had a good one last, uh, last week with, uh, Troy, Thunder what was Fist. his name? Thunderfist. <laughs> Troy Thunderfist, the fat, pudgy, John Goodman looking, uh, attorney who was just knocking motherfuckers <laughs> out like Steven Seagal left and right. So you know, I do love bar fights. They're one of, I love. I love going out. Just maybe I get to see a bar fight. See, see to Steven. me, I love a good bar fight. A, a good bar <laughs> fight. That's way different. Everybody's in danger there. <laughs> I understand, but but you really learn who people are at their core when a bar fi- when a restaurant and bar fire comes down. You know, I for for years I worked with this uh, this manager named Becky, and I'm not going to say where. Um, but her name was Becky. I won't give you any other information other than that. But she always tried to put on like she had everything under control, right? And then one day, the kitchen hood vent caught on fire, and I find Becky in a fetal position. Oh my god! In the uh, hostess station, <laughs> crying. And I said, "We have to do something. We have to call somebody." And, and, and people are back there trying to put it out with buckets of water. I'm on the phone with 911. I'm like, Becky, get your fucking shit together. And she was like, what, the, the GM or something? She was like 42, and she was the general manager. Oh, my God. It was insane. And she, it just, she cracked, man. It she was, did, and that's the thing, man. Too much. Fights, arrests, fires, those, those moments really make people crack. So, all right, let's go a little more sensual. Tell us about the sexy part of the job. Give us sex stories, or just give us some of your sexy bartender uh interactions you know things like that <laughs> well uh most of my interaction <laughs> it, it's 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 uh, unfortunate but most of my interaction uh deals with older women at the bar Ooh. so nice. it's not nice. the cougars yeah yeah you know the silver fox um <laughs> nothing it, wrong with that. no nothing wrong with that but i mean it's not really uh I don't know. They don't have any filter. I don't know if you've ever talked to yeah. an older woman at the bar, but they do not give a fuck. Come on, they're give just us, give they're us talking. Us. They're they're talking all the dirty details. They're talking if the curtains match the you know carpet, like everything. They they talking about being bald. Now yeah. now now listen, bald, folks. Bald, folks, bald, that's a nice way to say it. Folks, we I'm talked about. There, baby. <laughs> 
Folks, we talked last week about uh, Mike Mike Windsor here. You know, six three, golden haired goddess, right? Now my brother's no slouch. You know, he's a big six foot two, beautiful uh, tan man with a great head of hair. Look at this that, is, and that mustache. Look too. at him; he can't stop Fucking smiling. Tom Selling he, over he, here. Yeah, he's hot, <laughs> and he's got just the prettiest damn smile you ever did see. And so you just got to imagine he's behind a bar, he's making you cocktails. You're a 45 year old divorcee. You may be a little bit motivated to get a little, you know, get a little crazy with it. What are, What are some of the craziest things these ladies have said to you? Do you remember any particular ones hitting on you? Um, any Any that keep you up late at night sometimes. <laughs> any you there think about? Was, there was a uh, like a probably 80 year old woman that told me that she was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She told me that she was gonna punish me. Um, I don't know. She was just very. All the things that she was saying were just very, like, very aggressive. And she's sitting there with like her family, like her daughter. Her and her daughter, you know, is like sixty something. So like they're all like they're all old, and it's just like very uncomfortable. So this that is, is like, fucking awesome. This like is, this is grandma BDSM. <laughs> so just, I was like, I you know, she I was like, I thought you were gonna give me a hard time today, and she goes, Oh, the night's not over yet. <laughs> I'm like, you have a walker. You are. <laughs> now, I have a very important question. How many times? Have you gone to the bathroom during your shift and masturbated to the thought of that old lady? Probably every shift. <laughs> That's actually why I got let go from my job. Most recently. <laughs> I would love to see that video. So I'm like, go pick me out a switch, Sonny. <laughs> it's, like, Come on. it's it's Doris Leachman in, in a in a in a, in a all leather gimp suit. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> god, just cracking the fucking well, whip, but it's very slow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. All right, well, look, let's move right on out of this category. We could stay here all day. I know I'm feeling hot under the collar. Uh, yeah, you're blushing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm turning red. Uh, my safety word is Methuselah, by yeah. the way. <laughs> when it comes to Matlock. The- <laughs> Perry Mason. Perry Mason! I don't have uh, a safety word. I like to live on the edge, man. <laughs> Listen, these old ladies, they're ready to die. They'll yeah, take exactly. it all the way. They don't you need, want you, a safety you're word. Right, I know. You want a you're safety right, word. Right. So anyway, all right. Question number nine. Bar hazing pranks and games. One of Mike and I's, mm-hmm. probably our favorite category. Yeah. I have to say, right? We love these games. I can't wait to the Dirty Tom episode. The people are gonna love it. We're just gonna. We're probably gonna spend eighty percent of the ep- dirty time episode on <laughs> bar hazing games. So, yeah. you got any bar hazing prank games that you that you'd like to share with us? There's a couple. Um, so, at the first job, first restaurant gig that I had, we uh, we had this, this one kid. He, he got he got picked on a good bit. I mean, he kind of just made himself a target, you know. There was a period, uh, actually, a kid got fired because we locked him in the freezer. <laughs> we we locked him, and the, only the no, one only the one kid got fired. <laughs> That's how it always. But goes. um, but yeah, we locked this kid in the freezer. Like we, I, I feel bad. We did pick on him a good bit, but uh, another time we took his straw and we wrapped jalapenos around it. So we uh, wrap jalapenos around his straw a couple times and then, you know, toss the jalapenos. So he goes to take a drink from his drink and his mouth starts burning every time he goes to take a drink. And he's like, what the fuck did you guys do to my drink? So we take another straw and we go over to his drink and we drink his drink. And we're like, dude, there's nothing wrong with your drink. Like, we just drank some of your drink. So he continues to keep drinking his drink. He thinks he's having like an allergic reaction to the soda or something. And meanwhile, it's just, one. It's it's just us wrapping jalapeno around his straw. A bunch so of back, so. back in the day, Manny's Family Restaurant, which was my first ever restaurant gig, and, and funny enough, that restaurant ended up closing down and was bought by Casa Mia's, where you ended up working, right? Yep. Um, I don't remember exactly when. I guess that was, what, like the mid-2000s, late? 2012, 2013. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's, it, this location has consistently been like a pizza restaurant yeah. of some sort, right? And I'm working there back in, in 2005, 2006, my first restaurant gig. And one of the fi- – you just reminded me of this with the jalapeno straw. One of their favorite things to do is they would make up like a spicy sauce, like cayenne pepper and hot sauce. And they would dip uh, uh, toothpicks in this little spicy sauce. Mm-hmm. And all throughout your shift, you had to be careful because – 
the, these other coworkers would run up behind you with a spicy tipped toothpick and then like prick you, oh like my God. right, like right in the neck or right in the That's arm. That's pretty hardcore. And at, fir- <laughs> at, at first you're like, ah, that hurts. And then 20 minutes later, when your arm is caught on fire <laughs> and there's cayenne pepper in your pores, you're like. I'm ready to die. <laughs> that's puncturing, man. That's pretty. That's, it was that's legit, pretty brutal. It was intense. It was intense. So, that's a, that's a that's a great one, Tom. I got to be honest with you. I might steal that. I might use it's that. Really good. It is um, a good one. <laughs> because they don't know. No, and then the, the the drinking out of it is what got him good. So he kept right. drinking out. And of that's it. the key piece, right? Is to to do that part of performance yeah. art to be like, oh look, it's totally fine. Yeah. What's your problem, right? You guys are fucking assholes. Um, <laughs> you know that's something we're gonna do to you. That's the only reason. Bring it on. I that. like fucking all the uh, Another do. one. Another one that I had was we had Gatorade powder at work. And so what I would do is I'd take a little bit of Gatorade powder, I'd mix it with water, and then top it off with soda and make, like, orange soda. Mm -hmm. And there was another kid who worked with me, and he'd be like, dude, how are you making that orange soda? And I was like, oh, you just squeeze oranges (laughs) into soda water. It makes orange soda. God damn it. This kid stood there. He took probably, like... 15 oranges. Yeah. Had to be. Had to be. Probably, like, 10 oranges and cut them and squeezed them all into this cup. And he comes back, and he's like... Dude, I don't understand. It doesn't taste like it doesn't. It's not like yours at all. And like I was like, dude, you must have done it wrong. <laughs> For weeks, this kid tried to make orange soda, and just continuously, like everybody in the restaurant knew, That's and nice. just watched him try to make orange soda and just laughed. You know, it's funny. Citrus ain't cheap. You yeah, know? well, I mean, and that's, that's the, not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing about a good prank. A lot of times it, it costs uh, the bar money, and guess what? That's just how it's got to be for morale, right? Yep, absolutely. So, all right, question number 10, firing and quitting stories. Give us a little bit of your, if you have a good firing and quitting story of your own, that's great. Hit us with that. If not, you got another one where somebody went out in, in stock. Sure, sure. So, <laughs> So I, at my last job that I just recently was let go from, before that, was fired four times, I think, before You were? Yes. Fired and rehired after they asked me to come back (laughs) because they fucked up firing me initially. For all you listeners that have never worked in the service industry, let me let you in on a little something. You don't really work at a restaurant until you've been fired and brought back. Okay, and so so this track record of a couple, four or five firings, that is a point of pride. You know, this man deserves an award. <laughs> he was so valuable that he was brought back after he got fired. And we all know that nine times out of ten, if you get fired from a restaurant, it's because the manager woke up with a stick up their butt that day, and they're not really thinking clearly, right? You know, or maybe, hey, they got a little too upset because you locked Johnny or in the freezer. Wrote, didn't lend your Skittle out in the, in the bathroom. It turned out to be not that big of a deal. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> so anyway. Um, it actually ended up being kind of a funny joke because uh, every single time I started to get fired in the fu- uh, every single time I got fired and came back, they gave me a raise nice. as like you know like apology. They wouldn't apologize, but they'd give me a raise. Here's more money. Take as the an raise. Apology. A hundred percent, hundred percent. But because of that, when I would get fired again, people would be like, "So is this like one of those fired and a raise? Is this firing, like a real firing? or is this one of those actually fired things?" Actually, when I did get fired this past time, I had to go in and clarify. Am I really fired? Am I fired? <laughs> and that's so. a, that's one of the most awkward conversations you're ever going to have. That I can't tell you how many times that happened to me at Ocean Pride. I was probably fired six or seven times from Ocean Pride. And I would constantly go in the next day and say, hey, do I still work here? And they'd be like, yeah, what are you talking about? And I said, well, you got wasted last night and you fired my ass. <laughs> told me to fuck off. <laughs> you know what's funny is Tom... To always talk, Dirty Tom used to always talk about this at the Nautilus, where him and Left Tevia, well, you talked about Left Tevia last week, um, would have these like games of chicken where Tom would be like, I'm not coming in for my shift Saturday. I'm going to New York with Brian to eat, eat, to eat acid and wash fish. <laughs> and I'm not coming in. And Left Tevia would say, Hey, you don't come in, you're fucking done here. And he goes, Try me. And then Left Heavy would call him the next morning at 7 a.m. and be like, Tom, where are you? It is time for your shift. We have the breakfast crop no, coming in. That is the worst Greek accent I've ever heard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I can do Lurch, but I can't do I can't do Left Heavy. All right. So this brings us to the end of our question section. We call it the cleanup. How's our driving? All right. We want to hear from you. Is there anything we missed about the service industry that you feel like people need to know? Or just any recommendations, food, drink? Things that you you know you really want to let the people know about. Hey, try this restaurant, try this dish, that kind of thing. 
Um, I think I would say the service industry definitely is not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun, but it is definitely not for everyone. Uh, no. Yeah, so I mean, I think that that's if I had to leave the listeners on anything. Be I, careful. <laughs> if you're thinking about taking a service industry job and you haven't had one before, I don't know, weigh your options. <laughs> Do a pros and cons list. Yeah, pros and cons list would be good. That's about the, the that's about as concise as you can be. So that's good. All right, we're gonna do our closing questions with you, Tom. First, why do you still do this? AKA, why do you hate yourself? Money. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's gonna be a reoccurring answer. <laughs> I, I enjoy being paid. Um, yeah. And it, there's no other profession like it, really, for fast money. It, you know, you work four hours, make <laughs> 300, 400, 500 bucks, like, you know, in a four hour span, like, and then get fucked up and do it again the next yeah. day. Like, yeah. And sometimes well, somebody pulls it. on your wiener. You don't even yeah. have to do it yourself exactly. in the bathroom. Yep. You yeah. Get, get old Grandma Betty in there. Yeah. <laughs> Let her punish she probably, me in she there. probably didn't even have, like, she had dentures. She I bet you that those shit's out. fucking nice. <laughs> <laughs> She'd been keeping that thing toyed. Uh, so if you if you opened a bar, what would you call it? If I opened the or bar, or what would the theme be? Is a better you know first if, if you don't have a name. Um, what kind of bar would you like to open? So that's a good question. Uh, I really like the idea that our house has with a restaurant with the multiple like restaurants like that i think that that would be a really cool concept like a collaborative food kitchen to have but have it be a bar where Mm. you can go say you want to get margaritas you go over to the mexican area of the restaurant so like a collaborative bar yes but yeah so not just food or anything but to have actual like a spot to drink at where you have different kind of, I mean, I guess, you know, Power Plant kind of does that with all the different types of bars, yeah. but that's not really what yeah, there's I'm a bunch of about. assholes it sounds like you're, And they all suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it sounds like you're more talking about showcasing different alcohol rather than mm-hmm. having like a party, you know, club setting like Power Plant, yeah. right? So this would be more like maybe you have a bunch of local breweries or local distilleries or, or maybe you live in an area that has a particular style of cocktail that's known for that area. So maybe it's margaritas, maybe it's something else, right? And you have, you're saying, kind of like a collaborative space that has these stalls for each one of these different vendors where you can go and you can say, hey, I can go and sample all these beers. I can go and sample some of this liquor. I can go get a margarita if I want. Yeah. Right? yeah. And maybe there's one food stall that yeah. offers some food, right? So it's just kind of a flipping the, the, the food kitchen yeah. On its head and do a, a liquor or liquor and beer kitchen. Yeah, I'd go there. I dig that. I think it'd be I think it'd be a good time. I mean, you know, you uh you could go there and I, I think you could get everything at each spot, but you would have like signature things yeah. at each one. No Instead doubt. of having like the full bar at, yeah. at every place, they specialize in exactly. this kind of group of cocktails. But if you wanted to get a natty bro or sure, a Miller yeah. Light or something, it doesn't matter which bar you're yeah. at. You could get that no matter what. But exactly, you're not gonna get their signature margarita over at the beer garden mm-hmm. you know, yeah. or whatever. You know? I dig like, it. We got to start talking about names. Yeah. I I don't have anything clever, I, but I, I what if it's the, you know, I'm thinking maybe something like the the Diddle Skittle Palace or something. Oh my God. That Jesus that sounds Christ. like the Skittle Diddle Kevin Palace. Spacey, the <laughs> yeah, Diddle <that's> Skittle <laughs> Palace. <laughs> All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I love Kevin Spacey for the record. Got to back that up there. Oh, great. Now we're flagged. Well, listen, Son of a bitch. Listen, I got to be honest with you. I'm glad we're sprinkling a little controversy <laughs> in here. You know, we, we want to get you, uh, some fre- feathers ruffled out there. If you got Kevin Spacey opinions, send them our way. We're ready for the debate. Um, we're going to have Tom answer them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to remind you guys is really what the show is all about is I want it to be, you know, Mike and I have talked about this. We really want it to feel like a bar experience um, that you are uh, using theater of the mind to create, right? You're drinking along with us at home. You're meeting this bartender that we're showcasing. We're talking about some things in the industry that you may not know about you may or, or you may be able to relate to because you worked in the industry. That's what this really is. It's a bartender relationship, yeah. uh, you know, in your ears. And but so, the only difference is if there's a fire, you have to fucking deal with it. That <laughs> is your responsibility. <laughs> All right, fuck off. <laughs>
A big shout out over to our friends at Trauma Parlor, whose song Fast One you heard throughout the show. Go check them out on Facebook and Spotify and show them some love. And if you want to be one of our regulars, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at BRP Drink Along or on YouTube and Spotify at the Bartender Rant Podcast. And if you want to be one of our VIP listeners, please subscribe to the Bartender Rant Podcast on Patreon. VIPs will always have a seat at the bar and you'll get access to bonus content, have a chance to vote on new episodes, and receive a 10% discount on all of our merchandise. And tell Mike if they want to be a big tipper, aka one of our Bozells. Feel free to make a donation on PayPal under the Bartender Rant Podcast at gmail.com. Mike and I do this because we love the service industry, and we want to bring you great content, but this is not our day job. With your help, we can keep the stories coming and interview local bartenders from coast to coast. And as always, don't just listen along, drink along! <laughs>